Before I begin, I'd like everyone to have a look at the uh, title of the presentation. It is very worthy differentiating and integrating your skills to the next level. And if you're perceptive enough, you may have recognized the quotation marks, and you may also have recognized the underlying bars around the words differentiating and integrating. And if you're even more perceptive, you may have recognized the implications of these words. Yes, this talk is about how to differentiate and integrate your skills in the field, in the beautiful field of mathematics. However, many of us are unable to do this. As an IB HMS student myself, I certainly condone this idea. And therefore, I'm here today to act as a spark of inspiration, to act as a spark of light in your long trodden path, in your long trodden cave of mathematics. Before we get onto solutions on how to differentiate and integrate your skills to the next level, we need to firstly recognize the problems. I've broken it down to two main problems. The first one is that we do too little studying. And this one is probably self-experimentary. If you don't study, you won't be able to solve the questions that you need to get your sixes, to get your sevens in mass. The other problem, however, is a bit more controversial, is a bit more paradoxical. It is that there is too much studying. Now, ladies and gentlemen, a word of warning, this does not mean I embrace the idea I embrace the art of procrastination, nor do I embrace the art of no studying. This has some different implications. Have a look at this image right here. This image is from my friend back in Korea who has just finished uh, his national, uh, university entrance examinations. And this, is, and this is him stacking his books up. In this picture alone, I can see approximately 15 math textbooks. They're about 300 pages thick. He has solved all of them. Nonetheless, did he get a good grade? Nope. Did he get even a satisfactory grade? Nope. And I thought to myself, why? He has solved almost 4,500 pages of uh, math. That leads to approximately 10,000 questions in the course of two years. Nonetheless, he didn't even get a satisfactory grade. Why? And one day, I had this brilliant idea. Apologies, there was a paradox where studying leads to bad grades. And all that came down to memorizing. It was the very fact that he solved those 15 textbooks that led to his downfall. It was the very fact that he solved those 4,500 pages that led to his downfall. Yes, this seems paradoxical. However, when you think about it, when you solve so many questions, what you do is you limit yourself in this boundary of mathematics. And when he came across questions that test his fundamentals, that is outside his comfort zone, he was unable to solve them. Now let's go into how we can come up, uh, overcome these problems. First solution is to revise. But we have a wrong perception of revising. Because practice doesn't make perfect. It is perfect practice that makes perfect. There's two key points in, re uh, in revision. The first point is to revise right after you study. Of course, this doesn't apply if you have studied for 30 seconds or a minute. But if you have studied for, say, one hour, then you really need to go back right after you studied. Go back to the questions you have done. Go back to the concepts you have learned today. And the second key point is that every time you go across from step one to step two, step two to step three, you need to be revising less. We seem to have a wrong perception where we just cram everything on the night before the examinations. But that is a wrong perception. On the night before the examinations, in fact, we should be studying the least. The second solution is to become the mathematician. Think about it this way. We all know the Pythagoras theorem. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Hopefully everyone knows it. Hopefully. But we need to think, why? Why did Pythagoras have to prove the theorem? Well my, well, my little brother has one explanation for it, and that is that he wanted to torture the students in the future. But that is probably not the reason. We need to think about why c squared equals a squared plus b squared, why he had to prove that formula. Because it's a complicated idea, let me give you three examples to support this. First one is a Rubik's Cube. Back in grade 7, I was able to solve the Rubik's Cube in less than 20 seconds. However, when I picked it up just last month, I was unable to. And I thought to myself, why? 
from a guy who was able to solve a Rubik's Cube in about 20 seconds to a guy who is unable to solve the Rubik's Cube. The reason is I memorized the algorithms, I had memorized the steps to solving the Rubik's, uh, Rubik's Cube. Today, by understanding the fundamentals, by understanding why the algorithms were made, by understanding why I, I am taking the steps that I need to in solving a Rubik's Cube, I'm able to solve it with far more confidence, with far more efficiency. For next, I would like everyone to take 10 seconds to, uh, to answer this question. 998 squared. Hopefully everyone has an answer by now. And if you do, I would like to become a psychic and try to guess how you have done it. Have you by any chance done it by multiplying 998 by 1,000, then subtracting 2 times 998 from it? If you have not, please keep that to your heads. Don't tell it to your friends, because I think that is what I'm going to tell you right now. Do everyone know this formula? A plus B whole squared. We should all memorize it as A squared plus 2AB plus B squared, just as we had learned ever since middle school. Then does anyone by any chance know the formula A minus B whole squared, which is A squared minus 2AB plus B squared? You may be asking, why am I showing you these formulas? And if you're perceptive, you may recognize that 998 is, in fact, just 1,000 minus 2. So in other words, it can be written as 998 squared equals 1,000 minus 2 squared. Doing the simple sum, 1,000 squared minus 2 times 1,000 times 2 plus 4, which gives you the answer of 996,004. Now, this is a case where we often fail to understand the fundamentals of the simple math that we have learned from middle school. The next is a calculus question. And I would like to apologize, but the title of my presentation definitely implied that there's going to be some calculus in it. Let's say that I have a one meter by two meter uh, cuboid, and I'm pouring in 20, uh, 20 liters of water per second. Then what will be the height, rise in height every second? Take 10 seconds to think about this problem. Hopefully, everyone has an answer. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the solutions that my friend gave me. And he's an HL math student as well. Filled with complicated equations, filled with various differentiations. But I told him, why? This is too difficult, and it takes me too long. Consider this solution. The area of a rectangle is 20,000 cm cubed, and we are pouring in 20,000 cm cubed of water every second. Therefore, the rise in height must be one centimeter per second. Now, lastly, motivation and pride. To start anything, we need to have some motivation, we need to have some pride in our work. But in the field of mathematics, or any study, it is difficult to have this motivation. And I completely agree. Even as an HL math student who is supposed to like mathematics, I agree. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you a method to trick your brain, trick your heart into thinking that you love mathematics. Every time you do mathematics, end it with a smile. Now, for example, if you have studied one hour of mathematics, maybe give yourself that 20 minute episode of Big Bang Theory. If you have done, let's say, five hours of mathematics, give yourself a movie. That way, that way, your brain, your heart, will continue to sort of expect, sort of want mathematics in the future. And slowly, instead of tricking your heart, your heart will actually love mathematics. In conclusion, I have no conclusion. Because I want my conclusion to be with you. I want you to conclude my presentation. I want you to be able to differentiate yourself from the rest and integrate what you have learned today in your everyday mess studies. And make me proud and make me smile in the end. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.